Hi, I'm Jennifer Mulholland. And I'm Jeff Shuck. We're the co-leaders of Plenty. Thanks for joining our podcast, Plenty for Everyone. Each episode, we talk with conscious leaders like you to explore abundance in work and life, fulfillment in head and heart, and ways we can all work together to make this world a better place. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our podcast, Plenty for Everyone. I am Jeff Shuck, and this is Jennifer Mulholland, and we are the co-leaders of Plenty, and we're so glad to have you here. We wanted to tell you a little bit about what we do and what we're going to talk about on Plenty for Everyone. Yes, thank you, and hello, everybody, for um, tuning in today. I am calling in from HeartSpace, our retreat center in beautiful Park City, Utah, in the mountain town of the Spring Thaw. Things are in bloom, but um, we still have a lot of snow on the mountains right outside our window here. And it's a lot quieter than we normally have it to be. We can't wait to welcome conscious leaders like yourselves and um, entrepreneurs and executives from around the world who usually come here to um, experience our retreats and workshops or we go out in the world and and visit them as well. But it's a bit quiet here in the mountain town of Park City. Jeff, why don't you tell the listeners where you're calling in from? I am calling in from Michigan City, Indiana, which is a little beach town. People don't believe it, but there is a beach here. Um, We are across Lake Michigan from Chicago, about 30 miles by boat or 80 miles, 90 miles if you drive around the lake. So it's a little uh, beachy summer community, a little gloomy today, I've got to admit, but a nice little place to call home. And um, we're navigating what everybody's navigating, which is one of the reasons that we wanted to start a podcast. You know, we're all dealing with a new world and how to be leaders through it, which was, I think, the genesis of the podcast way before any quarantines or coronavirus or economic collapse is this idea of being curious about how to grow consciously as a leader and how to help grow the people around us. Yeah, so we, um, this actually has been an idea of ours for quite some time, as Jeff referred to. And our intention is to interview and to provide a space for conscious leaders who are interested in leading themselves and leading others to create a better world. A lot of our work has been focused in the social impact space, and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. But whether it's navigating a time of great change and uncertainty like we're experiencing with COVID right now, or honestly, whether it is just living life and helping people become their best as we really create a positive impact in the world. That is why we want to have a conscious conversation with people like you and with each other so we can explore what are those topics, what are those challenges, um, how are we learning to grow, how are we finding our resiliency, how are we experiencing our worth during a time of change. Yeah, and it just like many of you, we're not traveling, <laughs> we're not going to our client sites, we're not hosting people. So there's never been a better better time to uh, to be creative and to share, and that's what we're hoping to do. I think depending on the on the episode, we have a lot of wonderful guests who are going to be joining us to talk about what they're learning or what they're unlearning during this time, and sometimes it'll just be um, the two of us kind of passing the ball back and forth and talking about what's going on and what we're learning. And and it's an an interesting time. I deliberately said what we're unlearning too, because I think um, some of us are learning new hobbies and trying to be super productive and, you know, trying to take advantage of this new moment. And, And I think for some others of us, it's about really confronting the habits that we use to cope and to numb and to suppress feeling uncomfortable. And so there's growth all around. It's just fascinating 
might not always be uh, pleasurable, but that's what we want to explore, I think, when we get together every episode and just talk about how we're doing and how you're doing. Yeah, and our, our intention is that for for those of you listening, that you'll take away a nugget of inspiration. You'll leave feeling more empowered. You'll feel leading leaving more connected to yourself, remembering how much you know, and um, more connected to your own wisdom in a community of like minded people who are interested in growing, in learning, in becoming. And uh, that's what excites us at Plenty. We really want to serve and support the conscious leaders. And a lot of our work is um, in the nonprofit sector. So organizations that are really wired to do good in the world and in the for-profit sector, those companies and small businesses and large enterprises who are taking pause, taking stock in, in terms of how can they do good and do well in the world, mm -hmm. making a difference in a variety of causes and in a variety of spaces. So um, we're grateful to have the opportunity not only to speak to each other, but to explore and learn from the nonprofit and for-profit sectors of small and large teams to, uh, to really see how we can create a better world together. Yeah, and we look, we haven't got it all figured out. We're learning too. We're learning a lot of new things and unlearning things ourselves during this time. And that, um, again, I'd say that's not always comfortable, but it's, it's really helpful to have other people to navigate it with. And we're really glad to be two of those people for you. Um, maybe to tell you just a bit more about like kind of the ethos of Plenty. Do you want to go there, Jen, for a bit? Sure. Yeah. Um, so we like to say that our vision is our name. We believe in a world of plenty for everyone. And then inherent in that idea is that we actually live in a world of abundance, that the things that we need, the resources, the people, the relationships, the love that we want to experience is all around waiting for us. And we're not in competition with each other. We're in competition with something else. Why don't you take that piece of it? Sure. You know, we, we're, we really see that we're in competition with a mindset and that mindset is called scarcity. That idea that there's not enough to go around, that idea of lack, the haves and the have nots and what that perpetuates and creates is competition mm -hmm. is deepened, more fortified silos an experience of separation. We just don't buy it and we don't believe it. We don't think that that's the construct of our future. We really believe that there is more than enough to go around, not only in resources and revenue, um, but in health and happiness, that we are made for these times. And what we're inspiring and intending to do is reorienting our focus. And we're right, we're here to practice that with you, is what are we focusing on? and what we focus on forms. So if we can focus on abundance, we may see more abundance around us and we may have access to it to unlock the revenue, the impact and the personal fulfillment that as conscious leaders we seek. Yeah, I've, the, one of the core ideas of our work and I think something that's just fun to explore is just the question of what if it wasn't a zero sum game, right? What if, for you to win, I didn't have to lose. Or for, for me to win, you didn't have to lose. And, and honestly, a lot of the models that we use growing up aren't built on that. You know, um, we grade on a curve, someone gets an A and everybody else doesn't. We, are, we really value athletics and one team wins and another team loses. But beyond those constructs, there's something more powerful. And we're living in a really interesting time. And maybe one of the good things to come of coronavirus is it's helped people see the power and possibility and community and thinking differently about, well, what if we all could win, right? What if the enemy is this idea that someone has to lose? So that ethos is one of the core beliefs that we have. And specifically in our work, Jen talked a little bit about, um, kind of the who we work with, but you'll see we, we have a wide variety of interests and we explore things everywhere from conscious leadership, which is really the kind of people we work with, 
to helping them think through ideas about marketing and ideas about harnessing community and rewriting strategy and um, you know finding culture. revenue streams. Yeah, powerful culture mm -hmm. and and well-being, and that comes from a second belief that maybe Jen, you can talk a bit about about the different kinds of lives that we live and whether that construct's real anymore. It's interesting just living through this time of change. It seems like so much of what worked in the past isn't going to work in the future. And one of the ideas around um, the multiple lives we, we live is this construct that we have a personal life and a professional life. And those two are separate. And what we're seeing and living through is that idea is total bullshit. We live one life and we are the common denominator. And when we put on clothes and masks and armor to show up a certain way professionally and take those off or change the wardrobe in our personal lives, we end up feeling exhausted, depleted, and quite honestly, it's, it's not productive. And we've been talking about this idea. It's one of the ethos that we believe at Plenty is seeing, treating, and serving people as whole human beings. That means that we have to have the courage, the vulnerability, the transparency to show up authentically wherever we show up whether it's in our professional or personal lives, at work or at home. And during this time of COVID crisis, literally everybody has been forced to shelter in place mm -hmm. at home and blend those two worlds. And it's just an interesting concept or question to ponder of, have you been wearing different clothes at work or at home? Have you had a different mask on? And what would be available to you, what would you have access to if it felt safe enough to be you wherever you went? Right. Um, and that is one of the ways that we help conscious leaders navigate times of uncertainty like this, or relationships, or leading teams, or developing conscious, healthy culture with their employees is to model that behavior themselves. Yeah. And there's a, there's a deeper implication there, which is, you know, the first question was, what if I could just be myself? Well, that begs the question of, and do I know who that is? You know, some people we meet and work with have gotten so adept at closing off parts of their personality, depending on where they are, that they're not really sure at the end of the day, which person is true to them. And that, you know, wow, you talk about a big question and an uncomfortable question, but what an invitation right now, as Jen said, to discuss that, to confront that. And one of the good things, we don't want to be Pollyanna about the, um, the tragedy that's unfolding economically for people and the health tragedy that's unfolding, because there is, there's a lot of, um, help that's needed in the world. And we'll get to that idea in, in a second. But there are things that we're being able to see in a new way. And one of the things that's really been dropped over the last couple of weeks, as Jen said, is needing to pretend a little bit. You know, kids are running in and conference calls, phones are ringing, microwaves are going off, alarms are going off. And isn't it amazing how quickly we all learn not to care about that? Um, so that's a, that's kind of a, a small window into the bigger idea that Jen's talking about here about, well, what, when do you do that to yourself too? When do, when do you hide certain aspects of what you feel to your spouse, to your friends, to your kids, or even to your own reflection? And what if all of those pieces were okay? You know, what if you could see yourself, all the good and the bad, and, and accept it? And what understanding would that lead you to? So big questions with capital letters, but really fun questions to, to explore together. And honestly, they're questions we're exploring ourselves. Jeff and I have known each other for over 20 years. 
we met in the dot com startup days in the late nineties in Salt Lake oh, City, so Utah. <laughs> How could we possibly be that old? Oh my God. That can't be right. But we had a special connection then and we um, went on different career paths, but they always paralleled before we decided to merge our visions to create um, plenty for everyone. And a lot of the questions that we're going to be exploring here really are questions that we're living through, that we're curious about, that we are teaching about in our workshops and our retreats and our coaching uh, for conscious leaders. And they're, they're questions that we're curious about ourselves. So we're going to unpack themes of presence, for example. Why does presence matter? What is presence? And how, does, how do we show up in the world to what Jeff was just saying with an understanding, a knowing of our knowing, a trusting of our truth, a confidence to be able to speak with clarity and conviction, an openness of heart and mind so we stay curious, so we're able to create a more harmonious cooperative society. Because as conscious leaders, we're starting to see a real deepening of the trenches of the silos as the hierarchical structures and the separation and the competition gives way to more of a collaborative, harmonious society that we'd love to be a part of creating. Those trenches seem to be getting deeper. And as conscious leaders, if we can stay open to insight, insight from others, insight within ourselves, to really hear the truth, hear our wisdom, we believe that that will help us uh, create a better world, not only for the people that we lead, but for ourselves most importantly. So we're gonna unpack a whole bunch of different kind of topics and themes, and it's based on Jeff's and my appetite of learning and living and stepping in it and fucking up and, being really passionate pioneers and idealists to create the a better world. Putting the tag on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's going to happen. It's going to be a little messy at times. And we're interested in what you're interested in learning too. So um, we're fortunate that there, we know a lot of people who are learning and walking the same path. And we have wonderful guests we can't wait for you to meet and learn from and, and share your experience as well. Um, Jen, you mentioned one last thing that I think would be great to talk about regarding our ethos, which, um, is we, we like to say that hope needs help. You know, it's a time of great change and disruption and hurt for a lot of people. And yet in those times we see what good we're all capable of. And the, the phrase hope needs help has been part of the kind of our plenty ethos from when we founded the company. And it just reminds us a few things. One is to not be self-conscious about our own idealism, you know, to not hide our own positivity, to not be ashamed about being optimists. And then when we get discouraged, it, I think it reminds us to, to keep going, you know, that we can rest and sometimes the best way to make progress is to take a nap, but that you know there is good in the world, and the more that we magnify that, manifest it, focus on it, be intentional about it, the more that it comes about. And why not? You know, why not make? Why not live in the world that we want to live in? I guess is how I'd say it. How would you say that? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's so much help and that is needed out in the world and one of our shared intent is to rally the hope helpers what where do we see hope is needed and what uniquely comes up from within our inspiration to do something to solve a problem or to make it better or to care for somebody and to share that care neil donald walsh has a wonderful acronym for hope and it's helping other people evolve. And I think that's what I, one of the th- shared intents with Plenty for Everyone is helping each other, helping ourselves, helping others evolve to a better world, to a better place, 
to a better becoming. It's so possible. We see it. We believe it. There's a lot of work to be done. And we believe that if we can share it and learn from each other, we might shortcut that path. It may not have to be so long, so, so windy, so costly, so taxing, so, t- so timely. Um, we might be able to, to get where we want to be in a much more enjoyable and faster pace. Yeah. And at the very least, you know, it's never been easier to be a cynic. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the, for the damn sure. Space has never <laughs> been more crowded. So at the very least, why not do something different and be positive and uh, create the world that we want? So, so that's what this is going to be about. I think we're, we're 20 minutes in. Maybe this is the time to wrap up. What do you think? I think that's great. We'd love to see you at Plenty for Everyone, or excuse me, PlentyConsulting.com if you're interested in learning more about us. Currently, we also have a private Facebook group called Plenty of Corona Care that you could join if you're interested in hearing more and being connected to the Hope Helpers. And we look forward to hearing um, and seeing you on our upcoming podcasts as we interview conscious leaders from around the world who are really interested in, in growing and helping and creating hope. And as always, um, if you like what you hear, we'd love to have you on this journey with us. We'd love to learn from you. The best way to do that is hit subscribe, write us a positive review um, on whatever podcasting tool you're using. It really matters. It means the world to us. So thanks for joining us and um, let's walk together. It'll be fun. Sounds great. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye, gang. Thanks for tuning in. Join the conversation and learn more at plentyconsulting.com.